If you haven't played Rec Room in a while, there's a lot of new things to check out. Community-made rooms, custom costumes, a new rec center, and now you don't even need a VR headset to play this game. All that and more on this episode of Virtual Reviews. First off, if you haven't played this game before and or you haven't seen my first video, go check that out first. Click the i-card in the top right or check down in the description. That's more of a general game review, the game itself I review in that video. I'm just talking about the newest features that I haven't covered since then in this video. So if you haven't, go watch that one first, get a good overview of the game, then you can come back to this one and watch me talk about all this fancy new stuff. Before I get too into things, I do want to say this is still a recommended game for me. It's still my go-to. I still play it all the time when everything in my library feels stale and, you know, I don't want to just go buy a new game. I play Rec Room because it's always new, it's fresh, there's new stuff to do. Plus, it's free, so I recommend it to pretty much anybody that has a VR headset. You might as well try it to see if you like it because there's nothing to lose. There have been a lot of new features added. Some are kind of cool, some are you know, controversial a little bit. So I'm just here to unpack those things. If you want to hear about all the new features, you're in the right place. Now the first thing I want to address is probably the most controversial topic in Rec Room's recent updates. A little thing the Rec Room team is calling screen mode. Now luckily, it's only open to people who have been playing the game for a while and have a good moderation history. I say luckily because I am not a fan of this new concept. If you haven't heard of Rec Room Screen Mode, basically, the developers are trying to widen the player base by making the game accessible to people who don't have a VR headset. That's right. Pretty soon you can play Rec Room, previously a free staple of all mainstream VR headsets, on a pancake screen. Screen Mode allows you to participate in all your favorite Rec Room activities from a third-person perspective using a mouse and keyboard or a controller. Look, I'm not some sort of VR elitist. I don't look down on people who don't have VR headsets, whether they can't afford it or they aren't interested in them. VR is becoming more consumer friendly at a rapid pace now because of the developments made over there at Oculus Facebook headquarters, but it's still a very exclusive hobbyist market, and I understand that. I'm not trying to exclude people from a fantastic free-to-play game, but it's just a question of user input and how those users interact with each other. I love cross-platform play. I think it's fantastic for the gaming community, and I almost hate to say it, but I feel like we have to thank Fortnite a little bit for making it such a mainstream standard. The thing is, even Fortnite understands that there are differences in the platforms, mainly the input methods, that affect the gameplay. If you play Fortnite with a controller on Xbox or PlayStation, they won't match you with PC players using a mouse and keyboard by default unless you choose to because there's such a difference between those input devices. An even more extreme case is people playing on the touch screen on their mobile devices. You can't put those people up against people using the precision of a mouse and keyboard and expect a fair result. Now when you apply this to Rec Room, the differences between playing in VR versus on a flat screen, the differences begin to compound. In VR, you can carefully peek around corners, you can naturally crouch and move your body in ways that you can't in a traditional flat screen video game. You can quickly look in a direction without turning all the way around. These are the things that make VR games so much more immersive, and when put in a competitive activity, they make a lot of difference. On the other side of that coin, in competitive combat modes, when you're using melee weapons, uh, gun type weapons, bows, it's completely different when looking at the two input types. When you pick up a bow in VR, you have to use it like a real bow. You don't get some sort of crosshair to help you know where the arrow is going to fly. You have to pull it back and know which angle you're pointing it at to be accurate. Whereas when you're on screen mode, you can just move your reticle over where you want to fire and you can just leave it there. Taking advantage of perfectly consistent accuracy that you would never have when using it hands on. Now I can already hear you typing in the comment section. Rec Room isn't purely competitive tricky, it's a huge social platform about bringing people together. People shouldn't be excluded because they don't have a VR headset. Now I agree with you, but guess what? Being in VR instead of using a flat screen has a huge impact on being social online as well. Obviously being in a video game, there's a level of anonymity that you don't have in real life, but in VR you still pick up on subtle social cues and even body language that you don't get in flat screen games. 
I luckily haven't experienced this, but a big complaint I've seen in the community is that screen players don't notice or understand nuanced social things like personal space. Personal space is not a thing in regular video games, but in VR, when you're in a social environment, you give people space like you do in real life. I've heard accounts of screen players getting really close to VR players, and it's just weird and awkward and makes them uncomfortable. Viewing the game from a flat, third-person perspective, you might not even do it on purpose. You might not even realize how close you are to someone because you don't have any depth perception. But to the person in VR, your avatar is right up in their field of view, your chat volume increases as you get closer, it feels immersive and real, because it's designed to feel that way, and it makes them uncomfortable. This isn't an idea that I would have came up with or considered. If screen mode was put to a vote to the community, I wouldn't have voted for it and I honestly don't think a majority of Rec Room players would have either. Yeah, I understand running a free-to-play game like this that's always changing and improving is probably tough and you need a wide player base to make money. Nobody paid for the game and not everyone is going to pay for the microtransactions. So when VR is such a niche hobbyist market like it currently is, I understand the motivation to widen the player base by creating this screen mode. So I don't know if it was the best move or not, but at the very least it still needs some ironing out. All that being said, take this with a grain of salt. I haven't been able to try screen mode myself. I got all my footage from another YouTuber named Homestar VR. Go ahead and check his channel out. I'll leave a link in the description. I haven't had problems with screen players as severe as some of the accounts that I've come across. So maybe they're already fixing some things and working on it. I'm not leaving Rec Room anytime soon. I just wanted to share my current opinions. I'm not a big fan of screen mode, but maybe they'll make it work in the future. Moving on, if you haven't played in a while, community-made custom rooms have become a huge part of this game. So much so that I believe it had a significant influence on this new Rec Room central hub that we got recently, but I'll talk about that more later in the video. The ability to create custom rooms has ushered in a whole new age of Rec Room in my opinion. It has become infinitely more unique and creative, and I think it was a really cool thing to bring to this community. This allows people to turn Rec Room into a battleground between two pirate ships out at sea, or a free-for-all battle game set high up in the sky. People can even create an entire world out of old and possibly dead memes. I personally am a fan of the default activities provided by Rec Room. That's what won me over before and it's still my favorite part. But these community rooms can be interesting experiences worth trying when Paintball and Rec Royale is getting a little stale for you. But let's be real, Paddleball is still the best activity of all time. Now let's talk about this fancy new community center. God damn this place looks good. I miss using only doors to get to the games, but wow this place looks really nice. It's got a nice open floor plan, and you might notice there's a striking lack of doors. Now all the activities are organized in categories, and each category has its own door instead of individual doors for each activity. Now in the ever-expanding universe of Rec Room, this design choice makes a lot of sense, especially with the emphasis they're putting on community-made rooms, but I miss going through a door straight to another location. Now when you activate a door, it just brings up a menu anyway to select a room. This is something you can do from anywhere, so what's the point really? This kind of ruins the novelty of walking up to the door in the first place. I know this is a pretty small complaint, but I appreciated the immersion and I never used my watch to pick an activity until they forced me to. I miss seeing everybody in the rec room before they picked what they wanted to play. You could see where people were going, and you can tell which ones were popular and which ones weren't. Now you have no idea until you go there. I would like it if they had little sub rooms with choices for the default activities, but one can only dream. Either way, this new community center is gorgeous and it makes the game feel fresh and new, but I don't see people in it very often because they want you to just pick rooms from your watch menu anyway. Now a few little things before I go, they've added more control options and customizations of these control options. You can switch between teleport and free walking, and now free walking includes a jump because you can't teleport at all if you select free walk. You can also adjust when you have the motion sickness blinders around your vision, which is super nice because those blinders are a pain when you're trying to get footage. Also you can make custom costumes, which is another option for people to take advantage of their creativity. You can even implement these costumes in your custom rooms, just like these meme costumes in that weird meme world that I brought up earlier. And as a last quick note, they've just added bowling. I haven't got to play it, they added bowling right around the time that I was recording this. 
So unfortunately, I can't tell you how good it works, but it looks really cool, and I'm honestly surprised I've never seen bowling in VR before. Seems like a really good choice to me, so I'm glad they have it now, and I'm excited to try it when I have time. So whenever you're watching this, it should be ready to go. If you want to watch this and go play bowling, then go ahead and try it out and tell me what you think in the comments down below. Hey, thanks for watching another video about Rec Room. They're constantly adding things to this game, making it new, which is great. And that also means there's always new content for me to review. So I'll keep making videos on Rec Room from time to time. But I'm also going to be moving on to some other VR games pretty soon. I'm also coming out with a new series of videos pretty soon, but I'm kind of keeping them secret right now. So if you haven't done so yet, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you're notified of my next review, as well as when I come out with this new series of videos. Click that like button, let me know what you thought down below, and I'll see you next time. Peace.